Hello, everybody. It is your girl, Miss T Talk, and I am here with the one and only 112. Mike and Slim, how are you guys? Blessed and highly favored. How are you? Great. <laughs> Great. I was uh, just saying, like, this is going to be a different time that I'm, in that I'm interviewing you guys because I'm a millennial. So I've been listening to you guys when I was like six, seven, and we're right, in a different right. generation and we're in different age. So to have right. you guys on my show means so much to me. Uh, right. I know that you guys growing up, uh, you guys knew each other, uh, high schools. I think one of you guys were like in college and you grew up in the church and, and that's where your sound comes from. I know people actually, your, your influences, but your influences come from the church. So tell me more about that when you're doing talent shows, winning talent shows. So tell me more about that experience growing up. Yeah, um, it, it's, it's actually crazy because, it, you know, growing up in the church, you know, singing secular music was 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 kind of taboo and it kind of was like frowned upon as far as our family was concerned. So, you know, we had to learn the, the R&B songs like, you know, covertly you know what i mean we had to right. we had we had to hide to learn the you know the the, the r&b songs and stuff even though the mild mannered 80s 90s r&b we still had to be covert when we learned those songs but you know once um they realized how serious we were as far as music was concerned it, it wasn't just you know a, a hobby for us it was just really it was a way of life for us that's when people started to you know kind of kind of uh come come off of the you know, just being so dogmatic when it comes to Christian music and things of this nature, because we did grow up in the church and we did grow up in with that belief system that, you know, uh, it was it was Christ and it was nothing else. You know what I mean? So that was the the mindset that we had. So anything outside of that was was considered profane, you know. And uh, so, you know, we had to we, we had to that was the that was a, a challenging moment for us where we had to figure out a, exactly who we were and where we going to live for other people or where we're going to live for ourselves and we chose to live for ourselves and uh, that's the reason why 112 is what 112 is but yeah it was definitely challenging to you know to to sing those secular songs as my mother would call it as, as Slim's mother would call it the secular music you know while we were you know trying to you know be God fearing and, and talking about you know uh, peaches and cream and all this other stuff. <laughs> I know, because the, the music that you guys uh, definitely uh, turned down and made, I think that you guys have um, music into every situation that men and women have gone through. And I love how you guys talked about that in the past, how you have created music for different situations. And I definitely feel that you guys have, you know, breakups, uh, yeah. sexual music. Yeah. Uh, I want you back. Let's go dance on the dance floor. You have created yeah. music in such yeah. of a tone like that. And, and being young, I know that um, Dallas, Austin was going to uh, sign you guys at the time. But it's so crazy how those missed opportunities put you in the hands of Puffy at the time. So would you say that was a blessing? Because I know Dallas was like, I should have signed you guys. <laughs> well, you know what? And probably in disguise. Like, you know, um, like... The, the great thing about it was that everybody uh, was very instrumental in, in how the uh, project turned out. You know, so big shouts out to Tim and Bob, first and foremost, you know, who uh, took out their time while they were working on the Boys to Men album. I think it was the number two album. And uh, mm -hmm. we were all in high school at the time, going up there, just, you know, trying to hone in on our, on our crafts. And um, it was just a blessing, you know, them coming in and, you know, teaching us like the like little things like we we for the most part, we knew we were raw. We were very raw with our uh, talent. You know, we knew the sound like the harmonies and stuff like that. Now, what Tim and Bob did, they, they refined what we had. And you know what I mean? And it made it make sense. You know what I mean? When to put this hook here? How many times, you know, how many bars here? You know, just all kind of stuff, you know, as we were finding out who we were, because, you know, yes. We were winning every talent show, singing everybody else's song. You know what I mean? But now yeah. it's, it's about finding out what's going to make us the best pound for pound uh, R&B male group of our, of our era. So, yeah. Exactly. Big uh, yeah, yeah and, Tim and Bob, I mean, whew, those are one of my favorite um, producers. They sold over 300 million records. Um, I've, I've, I'm such an R&B person, R&B head. I love um, Tim Bob, even from the 90s and even in the 2000s, uh, how they contributed to 
people's music. I know Michael definitely talk about it, like the own song, you guys, your song, um, you know, Joe, Bobby V. He they've done so much. Donnell Jones, like right. I those are all, all the music that I've listened to that they have contributed in um you know, back in my time and even nowadays. So I love that you guys still show love to Tim and Bob because that love right Tim and Bob. there, love, love them. They love, love them. Those, those two groups, that, that right there had, um, they influenced your sound for decades to come. You guys have been in the industry for almost 25 years. Right. So you gave, you gave us that much time of your life, like from right. teenagers um, right. till grown adults, 25 years. That is a long time time like that's legendary status you know when the grammy i right. mean you guys went through definitely a lot in, in your career so i've um i mean skinning plants a bad boy at the time um must have been like wow because it was one of those like did he wanted you to be signed that day so you guys had to make that decision that day how hard was it to make that decision it was very difficult. It was it was very difficult because at the time, you know, we had spent a, at least a year, almost two years with Dallas because nobody had nobody could tell us that we wasn't going to be signed to Rowdy Records, you know, which is Dallas, you know, which is which Dallas record label, which um, who had who housed Monica Illegal, you know, um, uh, what's the what's TLC. the rock group name? TLC. What's the rock group name? Uh, Slim. Uh, um, uh, Highland Place Monsters. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah mm. So, you know, like, so we, we just knew that we were going to be a part of a part of Rowdy. And outside of that, the fact that the loyalty, because, you know, Slim and I, we, we believe in loyalty, you know, like that's, 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 you know, if I could tattoo that across my forehead and get away with it without Slim yelling at me and shit, then I would, <laughs> <laughs> then I, I would have a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I would have a long time ago, but you yeah. know, because I believe in loyalty not in, and Slim believes in loyalty as well. And, um, and, 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 we felt like Dallas was, he opened the doors for us. He allowed us to rehearse at his studios. He would allow, like, he wasn't, we weren't charging us nothing. You know what I'm saying? To be with Tim and Bob and, and to learn and to like, like Slim said, to refine our craft. So there was nothing, like, we didn't, we didn't pay for anything. Like, cause our understanding was Dallas was going to sign us. You know, we were going to be part of Rowdy. And aside from that, we just wanted to be part of Atlanta, the Atlanta scene. We we're from Atlanta. We were born and raised yeah. in Atlanta. Not like, you know, a lot of these artists who moved to Atlanta and then they say they're from Atlanta. We were actually born and raised. You know what I mean? Grew up, born and raised in Atlanta. So we have a, you know, we have a much deeper stake in it than a lot of these other artists who come in and then because they speak the language. Okay, yeah, you're from Atlanta or whatever. No, we were born and raised here. And we believed in it and we believed in the scene that was going on at the time, the movement that was going on at the time. What y'all seeing now, what you millennials are seeing now is something that we had culminated for uh, 20 years prior to you guys even being born. You know what I'm saying? Back in the night, in the early 90s, 91, when the freak, when the freak Nick was something that, you know, was the most prevalent thing as far as music was concerned. You know what I mean? Like, that's where we were. You know, we was in the mix of doing that. So that's, you know, our mind frame was we wanted to be Atlanta, Atlanta known, Atlanta loved, Atlanta based you know we just wanted to be so associated with atlanta it, it was ridiculous and when that didn't happen it kind of uh it, it was it was a good thing and a bad thing because we were part of the bad boy era you know which was a great thing which was a, a, an incredible thing that nobody else can you know can can lay claims to other than a, a selected few but um but we also wanted to rep for our city and uh and and so we wanted to be part of rowdy records and when that didn't happen, we were disappointed in the sense that we couldn't get it done with 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 Dallas. But Dallas, in 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 uh, in all of his wisdom and all of his honesty, he she sat us down and told us, "Say, man, look, I ain't ready for y'all. You know, I'm over here doing Madonna, I'm doing TLC, mm -hmm. I'm doing um, I'm doing a Boys to Men. I got all these other acts going on right now. If I do sign y'all, which I want to, but if I do sign y'all, y'all are gonna be y'all come out in like '97, '98." Mm. but we were ready to go in 95 you know what i'm saying so that's when yeah. puff came in was like yo i'll sign y'all right now and so yeah it was it was very difficult for us to you know leave dallas because you know we we felt like we had formed a, a bond with this guy especially with tim and bob so we was just hoping that even if we signed with bad boy that tim and bob would be able to come along with us you know and help create this vibe and this sound that they had been culminating with us for the better part of two years you know prior to us putting an album out and uh, and they were able to make that happen. So we were very appreciative that we were very appreciative of Puff listening to us and saying, "Hey, let me let these guys come in and, and put the majority of the songs on this on this 112 album on this album because these guys are familiar with Tim and Bob, 
And uh, because it, it took some coaxing. We're like, we had to convince yeah. this dude. We had to convince Buff. We had to convince him that Tim and Bob was, you know, the guys that we needed in order to make this album, you know, what it was or whatever. And um, and he he finally listened, and um, and it, and it turned out to be for the for the best. But yes, it was very difficult for us to let Dallas go I, like that. It was. I can't I can't imagine. I know that you guys had a conversation after you guys were signed. You know, coming out with you know new music. I know the one of your first singles. You worked with Stevie J, so you were. You guys were exposed to different producers at the time when when Puff did sign you. So it just really, I think you had a, a bunch of producers you were working with at the time, different music, different sound. Um, we wasn't getting that from um, your counterparts at the time that I remember. Remember, I was really young, but as I listen to music now and then, then we weren't getting that at the time. When, when, when it comes right. down to boy to, to boy band groups. Um, you, you know, you've had, you did diversity with Jagged Edge, you've had, um, the boys to men, you have the Jodeces, but 112 definitely did stick out a lot from, um, the crowd. It's, it's like you guys then and now, cause you guys are still making music. 2020, you guys just came out with an album forever, but you guys have definitely uh, paved the way for a lot of artists and a lot of groups. And I know that uh, when you guys did your verses with Jagged Edge, that was huge. That was we we wanted the verses. We're like, we want the ones full verses. We want to see them at Jagged Edge. We want we want to see you guys. And but at the time, Mike and Slim, you guys felt like maybe your music in the you you weren't appreciated at the time when when the verses came out. So yeah, tell me good. why did you tell me why did you feel that way? Well. Um... For a, for a while, you know, um, you kind of highlighted the situation that when we came out, there were a, ple there were a plethora of boy bands. So mm -hmm. we were trying to find our niche into the situation. So um, being a part of a label that, you know, forget the, the, the scheme, the landscape of the, you know what I mean, <laughs> of all of these boy bands, we, we were involved with a, a label where everybody was superstars. So now you so so now we're in effect we're we're in here, and actually if you look at the uh, billboards, we there were bad boy artists, multiple bad boy artists in top tens at multiple times. Like so, yes. we here we are. We're trying to figure out our niche. So uh, which is is a great thing to do, actually. You know, blessing. Uh, but um, so you know there were a lot of questions. You know what I mean? Like a lot of a lot of times we're we're one twelve. You know, our records, um, our records were definitely strong. And then, you know, then other, then, but of course, groups were being compared with us. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. we, there was, there was always that question like, okay, if you put, pit 112 against this group or that group or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, where do we stand on a, if we, if we made a list? So just felt like that versus was necessary. And so, you know, you can't, I can't, um, can't just, just say enough how, you know, our gratitude for all the fans around the world that uh, reached out to Timberland and, and Swiss Beast, you know what I mean? To, to have them to where it was so, it was so crazy that Swiss and Timberland literally went on IG and said, hey, where, look, Jermaine, <laughs> there's a multitude of people out here asking about 112 versus Jagged Edge. Make this happen, you know what I'm saying? So 112, we were definitely, you know what I mean? We, we were already, we were ready for any kind of way because, you know, our catalog, we're saying it with anybody. We didn't get a chance to really flex it, you know what I mean? Like, no, uh, yeah. we, we didn't flex our, we didn't really flex our, um, You're our, writing. our catalog, but, but uh, we'll tell you, like, that is second to none like we're unmatched <laughs> in that category so you know yeah. um so it was just a blessing to be able to you know uh celebrate both with jacket edge and 112's career you know what i mean like I, I just I, our legacies and you know Ooh. it definitely answered a lot of questions when when the rubber hit the road you know what i'm saying yeah, you were, yeah as far as you know with 112 you know no fillers no nothing we, we hey you said 20 songs you know 
you really need about 40 or 50. <laughs> but, you, but you said 20, this is, that's your room. This is your room. You know what I'm saying? Like, and we're going to do this, okay? Like, we had to do it. So, man, yeah. who, man, my brother, you know what I'm saying, me yeah. and Mike, we yeah. Yeah. sat down with the rest of the bad, the guys from the Bad Boy. Big shout out to everybody in the Bad Boy family that came together, you know what I mean? A college from Puff. You know what I'm saying? To Stevie Mario J, Wines, Mario Wines, Stevie Wines, J. Faith. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and our whole staff, you know what I'm saying? With G and Abraham and uh, Lucky and, you know what I'm saying? Like, we all sat down and, and we just said, hey, okay, this is how we're going to do this situation. I promise you now, had we have faced another group, it would have been a different kind of a way. So, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Either way, you know what I'm saying? 112, it, the results would have been the same. I'm glad that you guys definitely uh, had the opportunity to do that and to show us, like, look, we contributed so much to the music culture in the last almost 25 years. I think next year, right. 25 years. So right. we've, we've contributed to the culture. And you guys not only have contributed music, you guys have contributed your pen. So you wrote for um, the Isley Brothers, which is actually going to be uh, having a verse with Earth, Wind & Fire. So how do right. you guys feel about that? Uh, we feel real good, you know, because um, again, it's it's a validation, and and, and it, it basically uh, for us, it's a it's a it's a, again the word validation keeps coming to mind keeps coming to mind when when we do this because, like Slim said earlier, you know, our whole thing is about you know just letting our legacy be known and just letting the world know just what we contribute to this music industry, and we just weren't a fly by night kind of group, and we just weren't part of the bad boy family, yeah, we were part of the bad boy family, but we paid we played a major part in the bad boy family as well, and that seems to get overlooked you know a lot of times because we weren't flashy because we didn't go out and do a whole lot of things be it controversial or not, we didn't do a whole lot of things that would you know in the music industry would make you famous or infamous. You know what I mean? So we just we just went we just set about to making 112 the best R&B group that ever existed. That was our goal. You know what I mean? Like that's all we wanted to do. We wanted to sing better than everybody. We wanted to write better than anybody, and we wanted to perform better than anybody. That's all we wanted to do. Outside of that, you, I'm at home. Slim's at home. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're not doing any. We're not doing anything outside of that. You're not gonna see us doing any other. You know anything extracurricular, or whatever. Because for us, it was about the music. It was always about the music. So, uh, in addition to being performers, we were also songwriters, and a lot of people don't realize how much One Twelve has contributed to the music mm -hmm. scene as well. Writing for the Isley Brothers, writing for New Edition, writing for Gina Thompson, writing for for Kelly Price, writing for uh, Total, writing for Keisha Cole, writing for you know, all these different artists and stuff, you know, because we had the ability and the capacity to be writers in addition to being artists and whatever. So, no, it, it definitely makes us feel good to know that, you know, um, that 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 possibly one of our songs will be played as far as the uh, the verses is concerned, because verses was very good to 112. And with the with the new news that uh, that 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 we're now stockholders in this thriller, you know, this this company thriller. Oh, yes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, and that, you know, the, the first 43 artists you know, actually, it's forty-one artists because one twelve is going to take, uh, or like me and Slim going to take two percent, <laughs> two <laughs> shares, you know, a piece of, because <laughs> they try to give it to the mother two dudes that ain't here no more. So we had to get the mother two shares as well. So you know, so it's actually forty-one artists, you know, that actually played a part in 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 the first, you know, verses or whatever, in in this first iteration of verses, or whatever. So we know we feel good about the fact that we are part of history, that we're part of 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 black artists in particular with a focus on black artists being able to reap some benefits that we don't normally reap in the past you know what i mean like you know you exactly. see a lot of these white artists you see a lot of these rock artists a lot of these country artists whatever they reap benefit upon benefit upon benefit upon benefit but then when we do it then it's oh you selling out or you doing this or you doing that and all this other crazy shit and in my mind i'm like bro this is this we're we're in a uh, uh we're in a a, a, a world, a, a consumer world. We're in a capitalistic society that we live in. It's all about the almighty dollar. And if 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 anybody, be it black, white, or in, you know any other, if you can make a dollar, then absolutely you make that dollar. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, what are you talking about? Like, you 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 have to make that dollar. Mm -hmm. And so for them to 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 do what they did, that's what Bill Gates would have done. That's what uh, uh, Donald Trump would have done in in that mm -hmm. sense. It would anybody else that that has any business savvy. You know, when when 
Anybody knows me, a business one-on-one, supply and demand. And when it comes to economics one-on-one, you build your product up to the point where somebody wants to buy you out and then you sell your product and then you go on into another product and then you build that thing up and you keep it going and you still have a little equity inside of that product. So you're continually making money. That's what, that's what economics is all about. It is. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, 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 and uh, for people to, cause I've, I've heard and I've seen where they're saying that Timberland and, and Swiss beats are sellouts because they sold their company to, to uh, Thriller and all this other stuff. Look, mm-hmm. them guys may have felt like they have taken the, the company as far as they possibly could. And now it was time to, you know, uh, monopolize and, and liquidate, you know, said assets and make as much money because honestly, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, it, the, the, just like everything else, it has an ebb and a flow. And eventually, yep. versus urban versus, it's not going to be the hottest thing on the internet anymore. So you got to cash in when you can. You know what I'm saying? That's just like the dope game. You got you get in, you say you dope, you get out. <laughs> you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And it's exactly. the same thing. It's the same thing with you know when, when it comes to music, man. So you know, um, I I applaud you know me and Slim. We definitely applaud Timberland and Swiss for making a deal that they made, and our lawyers have reached out to them, and and we you know we we've definitely you know secured the bag as far as that is concerned. So we're we're in a good position right now, but it's definitely a good thing for us to be part of their verses and the Isley Brothers. That's just more money for us, you know, because of the uh, because of the mechanical royalties, and uh, you know, so and for your young people that are watching, look up mechanical royalties, and you'll understand exactly what I mean by that. And um, yeah, we're just we're just moving forward, you know. What I mean? And so uh, yes, I applaud the Isley Brothers for being this relevant this long. We sure. we 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 hope and we pray that we're as relevant as they are for this long definitely I, I the you you guys when it comes out to generations you guys picked up the late 90s the early 2000s the middle 2000s now you have picked up so many generations uh from when you guys were younger till now and even to see the growth now yes i'm only interviewing two out of the four uh, group members but you guys you too i'm so glad that you guys are still here still pushing and still wanting you know to do your music. I know there was, you know, rumors of they broke up, they did this, they did, they, they did that, but the other two members just didn't want to be a part of the group anymore. And okay, I understand, right. bye-bye. I'm gonna still do what I have to do. Exactly. And that's, and that's exactly what you guys have done. And that's what you guys have shown um, um, us uh, for uh, the last, you know, few years. I know your, this last album that came out forever, the, the, self, the, the title of that album already says what it is about 112 right forever even though right. you know we did have a rough year of the coronavirus mike you did have covid I i'm did. so glad that you definitely did uh thank recover you. in your thank year you. thank you um but i definitely did see that you know what was going on but you guys are um i'm so glad that you guys are still getting your flowers to this day um thank you. from different um sites you know because now we're in a different age we're in a digital age we're in a streaming age um, you have over two million listeners a month that's that still listen to your music. You are when, when I talk about re- the relevancy of your music, and then for us who supported even your last album that came out in 2020 and your singles that you guys came came out with uh, back last year, um, you guys are still promoting to this day. You know, you guys are on T Talk, so it's it's definitely been a blessing to see the growth even the ups and downs of 112 of what you guys been, you know, going through, have what, what we've been seeing, you know, in the light and not in the light. But what made you guys make this new album forever? Did you want to show us, yes, I still got it? Or um, what was, or like, you know what, my fans deserve this. What was the creative process and the mental process of creating the album and coming out with the album? Great well, question. Great question. All the above. All the above. You know it. I mean, you know, a lot of it is like medicine for Mike and Mike and myself too. You know, um, it was a rough, it's a rough three years that we were in. You know, we were enduring. You know, you you have things going on behind the scenes that y'all don't know, and then you have the demands what the fans want. You know, and um, we had to ask ourselves a, a very serious question. Like, I mean, do we continue to do this? Uh, I mean, um, what are we in it for? You know. Um, we we see that you know the great thing was like while speaking to you know i already knew like was with mike you know it's very very transparent you know you can see the 112 is tatted on his skin you see what i'm saying mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. when it comes to so when it comes to loyalty or anything like that his loyalty and everything is unmatched 
Now it's like, okay, who's going to step up to the plate and, and, and keep it at that same level? So I did everything in my power to make sure that, you know what I mean? So people have to understand that he, and Mike founded the group. He founded the group. Mm -hmm. I'm in this group because of him. So anything I can, I can do to, you know what I mean, to bring my part to, you know what I mean, to making sure that the dream he had in his mind, you know what I'm saying, even before I was in the group, you know what I'm saying, was not like a thing of the past or, you know what I'm saying, like there are things that, you know, in, in a great, in, in, a, in, a, in a great time, we're going to share of all the sacrifices that were made, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying, like people, you know, we've lost a lot of, you know, relationships, like material things, worldly things, like it's a whole bunch of things that, you know, just to make sure that, you know, you know, you ever believe in something so much to where, you know, people just think you're crazy and then, you know what I mean? You're just like, it's okay, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, <laughs> yeah. that's you know what I mean? So yeah, that album, um, forever, self, very self-explanatory. And, you know, there were a lot of questions. I mean, can they continue the sound? harmonies or um, who actually did what in the group, you know what I'm saying, uh, you know, as far as, so, you know, like, you can pay attention to, like, the, the like, what we talked about, you know, it's just like, every, everything, top to bottom, can it be, can it be done, the, the, product, the production, you know, is it going to fall off, you know, uh, who did what, so, it, so to get the accolades that we did for this project, you know what I mean? Even after the things that we were, you know, enduring and to get those flowers like meant so much, you know what I mean? To say mm -hmm. they had the top 50, they got the top 50, top 50 albums of the last year. Like think of all the, all the people who put out projects, like yeah. you know what I'm we're talking thousands and thousands of people. Like, so it, so for us to be considered and then, you know, it's not, it wasn't even an album. That was a, that was an EP, you know what I'm saying? Really, mm -hmm. Mike and I just decided that, you know, while listening to our fans, they didn't care. We had three records on that. It better sound like a, you better have an intro, an outro. You better have interlude. <laughs> it better flow through. It better feel like a movie. I don't care what y'all do. You better do it. <laughs> so, blessing that, you know what I mean? Everything turned out the way it did. Absolutely. I'm I'm so glad that it definitely worked out for you. A lot of things, you know, I know that you guys went through a lot of things, but at the end of the, the day, even through the hardships and everything that you guys been through in the industry, um, it has still worked out for you guys as a, a fan looking from the outside in um, yes, for so long. Cause I've been, yes, <laughs> I've been a fan since I was like young. I was young listening to Peaches and Cream, not even knowing what it meant, just listening to it. Now, when you get older, <laughs> you get older, you can, you listen to, um, you listen to right. it at an older age and you're like, oh, wow, one time we're in their back. Right, they were right, in their, right, in, right. In, in, in their back. And I was That's actually right. listening to, um, I don't know, you guys know who Anderson Pack is, right? Right. Oh, yeah. 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 So when he made the, the, the song Anywhere, uh -huh. uh, that song was because of you guys. I was like, oh, my God, they, they you know, because it was, right. you know, it was your song. Um, because right. because he was singing a lot of like R and B people, and then he said anywhere like one twelve. I said, oh my god, that's one of my favorite songs right, from right, um right. from them. And to see, I'm um, just just to see how two thousand and, and like in the twenties, how artists like that, you know, he's a Grammy Award winning, giving love to you guys on his album, just shows the spectrum of how much we. And the artistry and the music industry appreciates 112 of what you guys have g given to us. And right. that's why I'm so glad that you guys are still relevant and you guys are um, giving us what we want. We wanted that album. We wanted that music. We wanted that versus. You guys sacrificed and you did that for us. Right. And, you Absolutely. know, for yourself as well. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. So, to, so to do that, I think, has been um, such a journey for you guys. I mean, now we're in 2021. Um, and I actually saw you guys at concerts before wanted to say i went to the bad boy anniversary tour and i was like, nice nice yeah nice. that was i mean that wasn't that was amazing it was great i'm glad nice. that uh that yeah. they did that for you guys yeah. um and you guys at the barclay center i actually went nice um but that was one of our better shows too 
Oh yeah, that yeah, that one that show went viral. I forgot what I think it was like Biggie's birthday. I think like that at yeah, that time. Yeah, 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 yeah. When yeah. you guys went, yeah, that's the day yeah. I went. So it was like Biggie's yeah. birthday. It was like a big, big deal. Right. Everybody right. was talking about it in New York. It was, right. it was two nights, but this one night was Biggie's birthday. It was in May right. of like right. 2014. Right. Um, I remember it was it was a really, really, really good time. Really good vibes. Uh, mm-hmm. beautiful concert. Uh, but it's 2021. I mean, we're still in a different time. I know you guys. You guys tour like every year. You guys are always on tour, no matter what. You guys are singing somewhere. Right. So you guys never stopped at that <laughs> that aspect. Right. But right. what are we going to expect from you and you guys this year? Uh, well, uh, it's, I'm glad you asked that question because uh, 112 officially is uh, are working on a, an album, an official album this year. So Slim and myself, we are going into the lab. We um, you know, we we've got our own studio finally, which is, I know it sounds crazy, but we we finally got our own studio. And uh, we, we, so, you know, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a great thing as far as that goes, because, you know, with other studios, you have this time limit and, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to tell a, a creative person to, to be creative within a, a certain amount of time and things of this nature. And like you said before, you know, with, with the advent of social media and things being so, you know, instantaneous nowadays, it's not like the old days where you could just sit in the studio for 16 hours and just create, create, create. You know, now we have that opportunity where we can go back to where, you know, we 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 originated from, you know, like, yeah, we've adapted to the whole being able to, you know, uh, pump out a song getting under four, four hours and stuff. We can do that. But our preference is to not feel as though we are being rushed in and out of a studio and stuff. So, you know, with, with our own studio and stuff now, you know, we're able to do that. And uh, I'm so happy about that. But officially, 112 is working on a new album. And uh, I'm so very happy about that because, you know, like you said, we uh, the fans wanted music from us and we were like, bro, we got to give them something. And then Slim was like, all right, uh, let's give them an EP. I was like, all right, cool, let's give them an EP real quick. And then so we did the EP and then it, and then it, gave, it gave everybody an album feel. So we were like, now, like our dumb asses, we set the bar so high. So, <laughs> so, now, <laughs> so now when we do an album, you know what I'm saying? It's got to be, oh it's got to be high or better. You guys got to be higher than what it was or better now. So, but I feel like with the staff that we got, with the with the team that we got together, with the writers that we got, you know, big shout out to Smart Mouth NR. You know what I'm saying? With uh, with the producers, great Scott, and just everybody being honest with us. You know, and and that was the key too. Everybody just being honest. You know, when we come to us, hey man, what you think about this? Nah, that ain't it. Okay, cool. We going on to the next record. You know, they tell it, hey, bro, this is the record, man. I don't know what y'all hear, but this is the record. And, and everybody in consensus, you know, we did it by committee. You know, we, we put this out, we put the EP together by committee. You know, even though Slim and I were the bosses and, and we knew exactly the direction that we wanted to go in, we still allowed ourselves to listen to, you know, the writers, listen to the producers, listen to our circle. And they tell us, oh, hey, bro, listen, this is a record. Like, uh, I don't know what y'all hearing, but this is the record. Y'all got to go with this. It. All right, cool. Yep. This, this, all right, so all right, cool. So y'all say this is it. This is it. We're going to go with this. And then, oh, y'all got to put interludes on there. All right, cool. So Slim, we got to put interludes on here. All right, y'all got to put an intro on here. All right, cool. We got to put an intro on. You know, we just had to, we had to give them that 112 sound, which is intros, interludes, great songs, subject matter, us singing our asses off, you know what I mean? And then not sounding dated. You know, that was the whole thing that we had to, you know, culminate within our minds and stuff when we put this out, this EP together. It's like, bro, we got to do something that sounds like 112, but sounds like 2020. But, you know, and, and, but, <laughs> and then, you know, we got a, a subject matter got to still be meaningful, but at the same time, it's got to be what's going on right now in today's music. You know, say so the music got to hit hard, but it still got to be R&B. You know what I'm saying? So figure it out. You know what I mean? And wow. so that's, you know, and that's, and that was the mind frame that we had to, you know, had to go in. We were just like, you know what, we're just going to be an updated version of ourselves. You know what I mean? And, and we just, and we just hope that the fan base loved our music. And, and it turns out that the fan base absolutely loved what we had going on. And we're just going to continue that. But, you know, just so I can tell you, and this is an exclusive, as a matter of fact, because we hadn't told anybody yet. But you talk exclusive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tiana, you got the, you got the exclusive. <laughs> exclusive with the 112 project we are working on a new album and uh we're, we're, we're going to start in the next couple of weeks and uh we, we look very we're, we're looking forward to you know putting this project together you know um because we we plan on going on tour for 20 the end of 2021 beginning of 2022 and we plan on touring for the next two two maybe three years straight you know what i mean and we'll, we'll be doing and it I'm off there. of there 
and we'll be doing it off of this new album. So, oh, and our fan base, we need y'all to figure out a name for for this new album as well. Like y'all, if y'all can, you know, hit us up on the official 112 on our Instagram and just give us some ideas for the album, you know what I'm saying? Because we listen to our fan base as well. They told us, we want interludes. All right, Slim, we got to give them interludes. We want an intro. All right, we got to give them an intro. Intro. All right, we, we, we need love songs. All right, we got to give them love songs too, bro. We need an up-tempo shit too, bro. All right, we got to give them up-tempo. We got to get, <laughs> get a fan base. So we listen. So if y'all hit us and let us know what y'all really want on this, on this new album, then we will make that happen for y'all. We guarantee that we'll make that happen for y'all. And, but, you know, we, we want a new name for the album too. So, you know, y'all just let us know you know, what y'all, what y'all think. Yes, I'm very excited for the new album. I really enjoyed Forever. I enjoy your, you guys' music, whether you guys are a, a four, two, one. I enjoy the music <laughs> either way. And I'm glad that you guys um, definitely are doing that for us. You know, you guys care Thank about you. your fans over, over the decades yes, and care about um, the, the artistry, the music. You don't just yes, come out with trash and be like, okay, here you guys go. No, it's yes, very strategic thinking, listening, harmonizing, singing, you guys can sing is not, yes. is not no like BS. So that's why I appreciate, I've always appreciated 112. That's why when Greg said yes, I said, oh my God, okay. Like, you know, you know, <laughs> oh. I was like, yay. Cause you know, I'm, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm still coming up. I'm still, you know, my t talk brand and, and just to have a notable group Grammy award winning, that is a yeah. bragging right. Right, right there. Right, right, <laughs> so right, right, I'm just so right, right. excited that I actually uh, had you guys definitely join uh, T-Talk straight tonight. Up. Straight up. And and I'm I'm excited for the new album. I'm excited for the new projects, new visuals, new everything. This is a rebirth. So Absolutely. so to so to definitely rebirth and and really give us you guys your you know your all and go touring 2022 and to see to see everything come about and and you know me talking to you now and then to really like actually see it I'm I'm just so proud of what you guys have given us over the over the decades and what you continue to give us. 